Well, I want to pick off where we just left off um, with this spectacular uh, performance talk that we were having, and I want to spend a little time bragging on the finance team and the accomplishments that we've been able to make over the past year. When I started a year ago and I got to the county, what I realized is that the finance department, they were working really, really hard. And there's nothing wrong with hard work. I, I know the value of hard work. I started out at probably 14 or 15 years old in a tobacco field. Nothing wrong with it. But it wasn't very long, just a matter of days or weeks, that my mantra became for our department, let's figure out a way that we can work smarter instead of harder. Because they were working really hard. And I think the best way to do that is through automating processes. Um, so as I'm going through my presentation here, I, I hope you'll find several instances where we've been able to identify ways where we um, were able to automate processes, um, integrate technology so that we can do our job better, we can meet our deadlines, um, and be more efficient. When I first went to the county, the first thing I recognized was we did not have positive pay. And for those of you who are not familiar with what positive pay is, positive pay is a fraud prevention program with the bank. So basically, um, before the county issues any checks, whether it be one check or whether it be a check run with 400 checks, we share a file with our bank listing the date, the check number, the payee, and each amount of each and every check within that check run. And so what that bank does is they receive that file and they say, okay, as checks come in and clear the county's bank account, unless it's on this list or a list they've sent us recently, we're not going to pay it. It's going to get rejected. So what that did is that decreased the chance for fraud on our account greatly. So I, was, I knew that I was not going to be able to sleep at night until that was done. So that was one of the very first things that we did. Over the past year, we've had four vacancies um, in the department. The first vacancy happened in March, so I came in January, and within two months, the deputy finance director at the time resigned. Um, and of course, we were right in the thick of budget. Um, and then after that, it was audit. So it was actually the fall before I was able to recruit and hire my deputy finance director, which we ended up doing an internal promotion. As many of you know, Sharon Rose from the Water Department, she um, was hired as the new deputy finance director. Now what that did was that created a vacancy in her old position. So we've been able to fill that. Um, that person's been on board for about two months and we're in the process of training that person. In November, the accounting specialist too, um, who was Angela Andrews, she decided that she was ready to retire, and, and good for her. Nobody can blame her for that. Wish I could do it. Um, so that created a vacancy, and then the, uh, the, the extra vacancy was the staff accountant position that y'all allowed me to have in the budget where I took a, a vacant um, administrative assistant and used some part-time salaries and we were able to change that position to a staff accountant position. So we just interviewed um, those two positions within the last couple weeks. I've made offers on those positions. Um, the candidates accepted. They will be starting on March 1st. Another big project for us was our financial software upgrade. Um, when I first came, I was notified that before the end of the calendar year, the county would have to upgrade its financial software or we would not be able to generate our W-2s and 1099s come January. So we you know, kind of put it off as long as we could so we could get through the budget season get through the audit season, but come fall of, of 2016, it was time to buckle down and go through that financial software upgrade. 
and that entailed a lot of work. I'm not going to tell you what we had to go through to get there other than we did it. Um, it went, I think, really smoothly and um, we're up and running with the latest version of Munis financial software. We're also required to do a utility software upgrade. Um, same thing, um, it wasn't as dire, but it was still at the same time needed for us to be able to use all the applications that we wanted to use, and we did that upgrade in December of this past year. So the next two items on the list, um, audit work and budget work, these are my two big projects of the year. They probably consume about 60 to 70 percent of my time and my workload. Um, if you think about budget season, you know, it's February 10th, we're just getting started on that. It goes all the way to June, so there's a good four months there that we're working on budget. Audit is actually even a little bit longer than that. We start on that in June and we usually wrap that up in November. And I'm pretty proud of the work that we were able to accomplish with um, both the audit and the work uh, or the budget work that we did this past year. Scanning and attaching electronic vendor invoices. This was a really big win for our accounts payable department. Um, it does require a lot more work on the front end but it pays off on the back end so that when the auditors get here and they need copies of invoices or if I'm asked by say the county attorney to get something back from the year 2012 you know there's going to be a time when we can just click in the system and produce a copy of that invoice from where it's scanned in and nobody's going to have to go out to the storage unit and try to climb over a bunch of boxes and, and try to figure out where the hard copy's at. We've been able to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one training with department heads and managers over the past year, um, and this is in the financial software. So what I found when I first came is that <laughs> there were a couple of department heads that had access to Munis, which is our financial software, and, and they were using it on a regular basis. And that's good, because they should be. I mean, they're tasked with managing a department and a very essential piece of that is the financial component so we would expect that our department head should be able to access that and use that but we also found that we had most of our department heads had access but they never had any training in it so they weren't really using it at all and then there were a small number of department heads that didn't even have a login and a password so we know they weren't utilizing the system so we've done a little bit of one-on-one -on -one training with them, but of course our goal as an upcoming project, um, actually in the next couple months, is to do some group training for our financial software. Um, they would call our office and request information and reports, and we'd stop what we're doing and we'd run reports for them. It consumes a lot of our time. And I mean, it works, but again, if we can get them, you know, trained and show them how to do it for themselves, it's just, it's just going to be so much better. Um, investments, from what I can tell, there was not a lot of investments done by the county over the years, so I was able to actually project out the cash flows coming in and going out on a monthly basis and I've been doing some investments and um, you know the general statute does dictate what type of investment in instrument that I can invest in so um, as a result of that I do anticipate that the general fund will pick up about an additional $35,000 next year in interest income the waterfront's probably going to be at least that maybe more because I don't see where they've done any investing they're um, cash reserves have been sitting in the operating bank account pretty much earning no interest at all. Um, accounting cleanup, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Brian did, um, particularly the invoice coding, you know, they were all over the place. Um, and so what we've tried to tell everybody is, you know, you need to code the invoice to the line item where it makes sense, not where you got the money at. 
and that way we can um, make sure we we can look at our historical trends and and there's actually some integrity with our historical trends as we move along um, everybody remember that we uh, cleaned up seven months worth of bank statements um, also we've been utilizing capital project funds you've seen those in your packages month after month for your board meetings and that's actually the proper way to account for any kind of capital project that you do that spans a multi-year. You want to utilize a capital project fund for that. More timely posting of revenues. We've made good progress here. There's still uh, progress to be made here. Um, one thing I noticed when I came last year I was learning, so I would go in there and I would run revenue and expenditure statements and balance sheets, and I was, you know, trying to figure out where all the funds were and the revenues and the expenses, and it, something just didn't look right. So I began asking questions, and what I found out is, um, even though our deposits would get to the bank on time every day, it, it might be months and months later until it actually ended up in the financial software. So there was just a really big lag in getting the money in the bank, which was being done on a very timely basis, but then posting it in our financial system was taking literally months for that to happen. And so, a couple things, um, and I'll get to one or two of them when I move along here, but um, I think being understaffed, you know, over the years is a big piece of it. Um, you've heard me mention this before in a board meeting. Farragut tax system, when we pulled the trigger on that or when they pulled the trigger on that a couple years back, they did it before it was integrated with the financial software. So in a perfect world, what would happen is Everybody would come and pay their tax bill for the day. At the end of the day, you pull your cash drawers, you reconcile your cash, you run a report in Farragut, and you make sure it matches up. And then you put your money in the bank, and you literally just click a button and you say, okay, all this financial information on what that money represents, you click a button and it goes over to the financial software and it tells you how to distribute it because we're collecting all kinds of, I mean, hundreds of different types of taxes and fees. So if I come in as a taxpayer and pay my bill, I could be paying, I am paying a county portion, I could be paying a municipal portion, I could be paying a fire tax piece, I could be paying an EMS piece. So right now, that is all done manually. And I have one position that probably spends 50, 60, 70 percent of their time getting reports from the tax department and reconciling that in an Excel spreadsheet. I can't let us go without saying this. That's one of the main reasons that we got into Farragut. And I'm going to say it to this board again, and I don't give a damn if it goes in the newspaper. You've got some serious problems in your tax office. Just remember, when it falls on you, you're not going to like it. And as long as you keep the people, the guy, Bobby Parker over there, you're going to continue to have it. Well, I mean, in fairness, I think the tax piece was up and running. You know, that's a separate piece. But then, had I been here at the time, I would have been fighting and screaming and saying, no, you can't switch yet until you can make Farragut talk to my financial software and interface to That's together. why we did it. I mean, so the Bobby was Bobby, supposed to be Bobby Bobby this. here earlier today. Why didn't you talk to him? We've been talked to about it over and over and over again. Bobby's done everything that he can do to torpedo Farragut because he didn't want Farragut. Now, if you're smart, you're going to go to Farragut and you're going to say, we need an audit outside of Bobby and we need to bring a consultant in. And I had this set up at one time so that a consultant was going to do this. Bobby wasn't going to have that much to do with it. And, and the wound up, Brian, you got scrambled up in that, I think, probably without knowing what was going on. We wound up and didn't get the consultant. Actually, the consultant backed out. 
Because he knew he was walking into a rat's nest. Well, he, he, he said it was because he was doing that. I mean, it was, it, no. was, Pete, it was Pete Rada. Pete Rada, who was with, with uh, yeah, Forsyth County, he helped, he helped his program. If you're <laughs> smart, you'll go get another consultant and oversee this thing and get it fixed. Well, they're, well, let working, me, they're working yeah, on it. Let me tell you where we're at now. And it's in a part of my slide. Under ongoing projects, you'll see it listed there as number two, tax reconciliation interface. I am working with Eric Rippey, is his name, from Farragut. Oh, you are? I am. So that's the news I've heard on this. And I'm coming up with a solution. I mean, it's not an easy project, but we're working on getting it mapped so they talk to each other. Hang in there and keep going. Thank you. I'm going to try. You know, unfortunately for me, um, the employee that retired back in November, she was the 28-year employee that knew more about tax than anybody else. So we, Sharon and I, we've really just had to jump in there and try to figure out to the best of our ability, you know, how it's all reconciled manually. And then it works. Manual reconciliation works. Oh, no, it works. It's the way it was done in the 70s and 80s, but there's no reason that that's the way it should right. be done today. That's right. Financial reporting to the board. I hope you've seen an improvement in this. I'm committed to giving you your financial reports on a monthly basis. And, you know, I can be heard probably around the administrative building starting about the 10th of the month um, asking, does everybody have your information in? Are you posted up for the prior month? I need to report to the board. So you can see how all this ties in. Um, the reason that you probably have not be, been getting the reports as you should in the past is because if those revenues had not been posting timely, you know, you can run all the reports you want in the financial software, but if the information's in, not in there, it's not a good report. So, um, you know, we'll continue to, to work on that and make, make progress in those areas. Um, Customer service transition from water to finance. Um, I didn't hear Christine's division from the water fund to the finance department. And that all happened, I believe that was in November or December. That did go before you as a board. Um, and that decision was made after Sharon left the water department and came back to finance. And my understanding is that customer service used to be under the finance department and it was temporarily put under the water fund. And I think we all just saw this as a good opportunity to move it back under the finance department. Electronic pay advices. Um, here's one of those chances for automation that I think will really help us. Um, so right now, you all, I'm assuming you get the same thing as commissioners that I get as an employee. You're receiving something in the mail once a month when you get paid that looks like a mock check, but it's just really information about what got direct deposited for you. Um, we are working on um, an email process where we can actually send those out by email. It will be voluntary for current employees if they want to participate. New hires, it will be mandatory. This is actually in test right now. We hope to, um, in the next payroll, which will be what, February 15th? We hope to send out at least 10 by email so we can test that. Do you have any idea how much money that will save the county? Um, it will save a lot of time, if nothing else, because, I mean, well, for one thing, we won't have to buy the forms anymore. Um, we won't have to sit there and bust it up and stuff it in an envelope and mail it to those we mail it to. So there will obviously be a little bit of savings there. Mostly in time though. Um, bank check file. This is another opportunity for automation. Um, so right now, what we do when we balance our bank statement is we sit down with the monthly statement from the bank from the, the bank and we go one by one in our system 
and we check off every check that's cleared the bank. Now that's easy for my personal account because I probably write, I don't know, 10 checks a month now. But for the, for the county, we, we write about 1,000 checks a month. So first of all, we're spending about four or six hours a month doing that every month. And then there's a lot of rooms for error. You can imagine sitting there for four, five, six hours clearing checks, how many errors you're going to make. So those numbers they just start running together. It's currently in test. We've actually run two tests on this. They failed the first two times. That's why we run it in test. And I just got an email from um, Matt with our IT folks, and he said we're ready for the third try, and he thinks this one's going to work. So, you know, this will be a big time saver for us also. Um, online requisitions, for those of you who are not familiar with, with what that is, that is basically an application in our software where you can go in the system and do a purchase order or a request for purchase order. So right now, we pretty much are still using a um, triplicate form that has stencils that um, most of our departments handwrite one and they turn it in to the purchasing agent. She verifies that the funds are there for me and then she turns it in to me for me to sign the pre-audit certificate. And of course we have an application or software that we're paying for where this can all be done electronically online. Um, we already talked a little bit about the tax reconciliation interface and where we are with that. Um, vehicle replacement schedule. I think we talked about this concept a little bit last year at the budget retreat. Um, so what my plan is to do is to go out and, and look at all the county vehicles that we have, put them on a schedule, work with the department heads to kind of map out when we feel like we're going to need to replace those vehicles, much like Christine was describing this morning for the water fund, and then also come up with a funding strategy on, on how we can do that and levelize the payment at the same time over the year so that you're not replacing um, 15 sheriff vehicles in one year that takes a big hit on that year's budget and only replacing five or six the next year. So we're going to try to come up with a strategy where we can level that out and thus level out our contribution needed um, for the budget to fund that capital. Yeah, real quick, and let me just let me add on to that. Our, our goal in doing that is with what Anita was saying, we want to see a level contribution from the general fund each year into the vehicle replacement fund, whether that's three hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is. But it's a level contribution, so you know in out years you're going to be paying that much. And what you do is you take money out of your general fund, out of your fund balance. It's so what we did in the city of Washington right before we left, and we put a vehicle replacement schedule in place, and we front loaded that schedule. We took a chunk of money out of the fund balance. We said this goes into the vehicle replacement fund. And what it allows you to do is that balance goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down as you buy vehicles. So the fund has a fluctuation, but your contribution coming from the general fund into that fund stays level. So it's always consistent. It helps you plan later and keep a good level of peace going down. So that's what we're talking about. What does that take about for the level out? It will immediately level out. Now we're talking about we're talking about the expenditure side where you will be contributing money from the general fund into the vehicle replacement fund. You'll have a straight, and I don't know, four hundred thousand, whatever it is. 
every year you're seeing four hundred thousand dollars. So your cost is, is level. <coughs> but in the fund, you may be buying six vehicles this year, eight vehicles, and so you'll see the balance in the fund start to rise. You'll see it go down as you buy vehicles. You'll never see it go below zero. It may come real close to zero, and then you're putting more money back in. But that's not happening in your general fund. So your departments start to level out. That fluctuation happens in your replacement fund. But, but you're going to have all of the canning departments that have vehicles in, in that Schedule. Yes. Like, All the general fund departments will be in one. The enterprise funds, like the war fund, that seems like that will be in a separate okay. because it's an enterprise fund. It has to be on its own. FEMA reimbursement for Hurricane Matthew. Um, actually, have a meeting scheduled on Monday morning at the EOC to start the reimbursement process. Um, we kind of started pulling all of our records. We've got all the payroll records showing the overtime. Um, we've got the debris removal invoices and all the other invoices. So this year FEMA's doing a little bit differently. They want to send out a representative for you to actually sit down with and they'll help us populate our reimbursement worksheets. So we'll be beginning on that on Monday. Training of the finance staff. Um, we're going to be doing some cross training of the finance staff. Finance staff, um, because there's not been a lot of that done in the past, and you know that's not good because if you've only got one person that's real proficient in running payroll, and something happens that that one person needs to be out for a procedure or something, then um, I like to think I can get in there and figure it out, but it's just it's just better, it's a better business practice to go ahead and have somebody cross-train, even have somebody that does it periodically, um, that person, so they, you know, they, they stay up to date with it and it's fresh in their mind that they do have to jump in there and do it. Um, so we're working on that. And then you'll see in parentheses I've got BCCC, and actually the LGC, is going to be offering a municipal municipal finance class beginning March 7th here at the community college. Um, it will be on Tuesday nights from 6 to 9. So it's about 46 hours of instruction time. They'll be going over things like internal controls, purchasing, budgeting, auditing, investing, everything that impacts a, a, a finance office. And I intend on sending every one of my staff members, and they've all agreed to it. And you know, I've had I've got staff that have been working with the county for 15 years. In fact, I, I had an employee who told me she's been working with the county for 15 years, and she's been to one one class in 15 years. And that's not your fault. You know, we've always had money budgeted for travel and professional development, but for whatever reason, in the past. You know, there were, there were always good intentions to go, but, you know, the workload was there and it had to be done and they just weren't able to make it in the past. But I'm committed to developing my staff and, and all nine of my staff have signed up to go to that class. And if there's any commissioner that would like to go, it's open to you too. And you can find out what we do on a daily basis and you can, we'll just let you. You can check behind me. <laughs> no. You can check behind me. Nobody wants to give up a Tuesday night to go to a finance class. <coughs> Upcoming projects. So I don't know if you've noticed yet, but if you work in the finance department, pretty much your responsibility is keep up your daily work and meet your deadlines, and then everybody's got a special side project. All of us. Um, S Cheats is going to be a big project coming up for us. So what we found out when we were balancing that seven months worth of bank statements is that there's some really old checks out there. Um, we've done research on them. We know that they, they are probably owed to either the taxpayer or the vendor, but we've got to go through a process that is mandated by the state where we need to send them a letter. And, and basically the letter says, you know, in 1999, and there are some that old, the county wrote you a check for 
$28.90 for a refund of your taxes and our records indicate you never cashed that, do we owe you this money, yes or no? And if they check yes and send that back to us, we void the check and we re reissue them a check. And that's just a wash for us. It doesn't cost us any money. If we don't get the letter back, then we have to send that money to the state. And that's cheated. RFP for banking. Um, I've been told that we've been with our same bank for like 20 plus years and our fees are high. And when I went through an RFP for banking services at the city, we saved about $40,000. So it's a good project. It's a money saving project and it's one we want to do and it's one we want to do sooner than later. Um, it's a long project. It'll probably take us a year to switch banks, believe it or not. I went to a conference back in the fall and Wake County gave a presentation. They went through an RFP banking process. It took them two years to switch. So if it took them two years as big as they are, hopefully we could do it in a year. And you think, well, what in the world? Why would it take a year? Well, all these other things that I talked about up here, that positive pay, that bank file, you have to get all that set up with them. Um, the bank check file, that has to be set up with the new bank. We have probably 30 or 40 state agencies that direct deposit funds into our account. We have to identify all of them, notify all of them of the new bank. It's just, there's just a lot of legwork to do. Um, Lockbox, that's current, currently being utilized in the water department to process the mail payments. And we are spending $43,000 a year for somebody in Charlotte to get our mail payments, open them up, and process them for us and deposit them in a bank, in our bank account. And it ends up being about right under a dollar per check. So in talking with Sharon, and once we get everybody housed under one roof, and we've got our whole team together, and we'll be able to share responsibilities and kind of pull from different resources and folks, we, we were thinking that's something we can probably bring back in-house and save that money. And I think we can do it without hiring anybody. If we got to hire somebody to do it, it probably doesn't make sense by the time you calculate in the benefits. But I, I think we can make it work. We certainly want to look at it and see if we can make it work. I call me every day to send a Bible with $42,000. Can you use a stamp? Yes. Um, I talked about this a little bit earlier, software group training. I had mentioned that we've done some one-on-one -on -one training with departments and managers. We actually want to do some group training for the financial software and I was kind of really ready and set and go to do this but there were three things that were kind of holding me up. First of all that upgrade I told you about we went through for the software, it really didn't make sense to train them, go through an upgrade, have to bring them back in and retrain them. And then the other thing is that online requisitions component that the departments would be using. We want to make sure we've got that up and running before we train them. And then the other thing is, I want to get my two positions up and running so that they can be a part of that training too, because that's going to be good training for them. So I'm sure I forgot some of our accomplishments, because that's all I could think of. But we'll move on to the 17-18 budget impacts. I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of, even though this is so early in the process, you know, we're really just getting started yesterday and today, um, kind of let you know the things that we already know that we're looking at. Um, first of all, as I mentioned yesterday, we began the current year with a fund balance appropriation of right at $920,000. So, I mean, we can kind of assume that we're going to be starting kind of in that same hole, so to speak, as far as needing fund balance to, to balance the budget. I mentioned to you about the investment income. That's going to be an add for us, so that's a good thing. 
Um, the Washington Township EMS, you know, picking that up, that's going to cost us, it was 121000 and change I rounded up. We just voted to do the ED project with the Committee of 100. Um, the budget impact of that is $35,000 a year for three years. Um, Glenn had mentioned an ambulance rebuild at about $90,000. And the vehicles and the other capital, I'm really not sure what the difference is going to be. Of course, we had a certain level of funding of those for this year. Not sure if that's going to go up or down. And we'll just have to wait and see when we get the request back from the departments on that one. And of course, the bottom one's a big one. Um, in meeting with Becky Beasley from MAPS this past week, she made the comment that she had not seen any pay study come in with less than a 5%, what needed a 5% adjustment. So that, that's going to be a really big number for us there. So, um, $13 million payroll. And she said she had not seen less than 5%. And she'll be giving us some strategies for implementation. She won't be giving us any money, but some strategies for implementation. So. That's all I have. Any questions for finance? What, what's the amount of money on the school bond? I forgot to mention that. I got to tell them myself because I mentioned to you yesterday that that would be falling off. We picked that up. Four o'clock this morning, I went back and double checked myself. I thought it paid out in June of this year. It pays out in November. So we actually will have one more year of it. It falls out in the revaluation year. So we won't, we won't pick up the 450 next year. It will be the, the following year.